policy lessons from South Korea's development. Political economy of the East Asian region, then and now, with Young Wan Yoon. Hello, my name is Yoon Young Wan, Professor Emeritus of Seoul National University and former Minister of Foreign Affairs and Trade. It is my pleasure to talk on international political economy and Korea's experience of economic development. International economy has changed a lot since the 1960s when the Korean economy began to grow. The 1960s was the period of Cold War and the United States led the international political and economic order. The key negotiators at the Bretton Woods in 1944 were mindful of the bitter experiences of protectionism in the 1930s and wanted to avoid repeating it in the post-World War II period. They established International Bank for Reconstruction and Development, International Monetary Fund, and adopted a fixed exchange rate system for international monetary regime. In this new post-World War II international economy, the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade, GATT, became the main institution which would oversee international trade relations. The United States was economically strong enough to lead free trade, and initiate several rounds of trade negotiations to lower tariffs. The Kennedy Round from 1964 to 67, the sixth round of GATT negotiations, marked the peak of international free trade. I think this provided a favorable international economic environment for countries like Korea, which decided to develop its economy through exporting. Korea began from developing the labor-intensive industries since it had not accumulated much capital to invest. President Park Jong-hee thought that government should play an important role in planning and expediting economic growth. So his government provided various inducements like tax incentives, foreign loan guarantees, financial subsidies, protection from independent unionism, etc., to the business sector to prod them toward the strategic export industries. Actually, President Park was influenced by the pre-war Japanese experience of economic development, which counted on the active role of government. Scholars in the field of political economy called this the developmental state model. This model contrasted to the Anglo-Saxon model, which emphasized free market and the initiative of private businesses. Since around the latter half of the 1970s, President Park began to push for the development of capital-intensive industries, manufacturing heavy and chemical products. He thought that the Korean economy would not be able to take off again if it sticks only to the small, value-added, labor-intensive industries. In the meantime, international economy witnessed a difficult transition in the 1970s. For example, trade protectionism began to increase gradually as the Western Europe and Japan began to catch up the United States economically and as the newly industrialized countries enter the global market competition. The United States began to be less generous and demand fair trade to countries like Japan and other Asian newly industrialized countries. Also, the fixed exchange rate system collapsed and was replaced by a managed floating system in the early half of the 1970s. Two times of international oil crisis brought about stagflation, a combination of high inflation and recession. In this turbulent period of the 1970s, Korea, Taiwan, Singapore, and Hong Kong 
so-called four tigers of Asia, pursued government-led economic growth. While Korea relied on the growth of big business groups, chapels, Taiwan counted on the prosperous small and medium-sized enterprises. Both Hong Kong and Singapore were city-states which utilized their locations as the hub of international trade and finance. Though there were some differences like this, government took the leading role and pursued the trade-oriented economic growth in these countries. This was contrasting to the Latin American countries which tried to develop industries for substituting foreign imports. In other words, East Asian growth strategy in the 1960s and the 1970s turned out to be more efficient in utilizing the relatively open international economic environment. After the difficult period of transition of the 1970s, the United States and United Kingdom began to adopt a new economic doctrine which was called neoliberalism. In contrast to the Keynesian doctrine which endorsed the role of active government, the new doctrine emphasized the role of free market. The leading economists like Friedrich Hayek or Milton Friedman argued that too much government intervention in the market was the source, not the solution of major problems. President Ronald Reagan and Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher bought their views and began to deregulate and liberalize the U.S. and U.K. economies. Furthermore, they pushed for international financial integration. The result was the expansion and deepening of the economic globalization. There were a few important factors which strengthened the momentum for economic globalization since the early 1980s. One was the opening of China in 1978 by Deng Xiaoping. As a result, China began to be integrated into the global economy. Since China was a big country, this accelerated the forces of globalization. In the 1980s, Latin American countries also joined the global trend of liberalization and structural reforms. Finally, the end of Cold War in 1991 and the marketization process of former socialist countries strengthened the momentum for globalization. However, the global financial crisis of 2008 shook the world economy. Since then, not a few people and political leaders began to lose their belief in the benefits of globalization. Korea and other East Asian countries also suffered from the negative side impacts of globalization, that is, Asian financial crisis in 1997 and 98. However, these countries were quick to recover from the crisis and resumed economic growth. There may be diverse explanations for this quick recovery, but I think the constructive role of government was an important factor. For example, in Korea, President Kim Dae-jung focused on developing IT industries as the new engine of growth after the Asian economic crisis. The base for prosperous semiconductor, computer, and other IT industries of Korea nowadays was prepared at this time. Korea is aiming to shift its focus to developing the knowledge-intensive industries nowadays. Of course, the role of government should be different from those of the 1960s or 1970s. The private sector is taking the leading role, while the government is taking indirect supporting role. Let me conclude by saying that the role of government is still important even in the new international economic environment like the 2010s. Government is supposed to take an active but indirect role in inducing the private business toward the new strategic sectors, providing incentives and building infrastructures for it and upgrading the educational system, etc.
However, one big condition for success is that the government or the state should not be captured by the powerful interest groups. Depending on the country's own particular political economic conditions and the global economic situation, each country can choose their own development strategy. However, bureaucratic autonomy to choose and implement a right industrial strategy seems to be a necessary condition for economic development. This is why domestic politics matters too.